buy the dip, short the VIX, fuck Bitcoin. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. It was absolutely insane. Week after week, we've had very violent swings up and down. And the past couple of weeks, we have recovered that loss that we kind of put in towards the beginning of August, which is a pretty big pullback if you're looking at tech. But overall, the S&P, I would say probably only pulled back maybe 5% or so. So it really wasn't like a super deep pullback, but it was a little bit bigger than we've been used to. And I think that threw a lot of people off, but instantly it seems like people are already back optimistic. Japan kind of fixed their situation on the short term. Maybe there was an intervention at the BOJ to prop up their markets. Who knows? But overall, Japan recovered, we recovered, and we're basically back to where we were during the last FOMC meeting and have recovered all of those losses. If you tuned in last week, we had an all right list. It was actually pretty short. I only had two last week because I really couldn't find too many setups. We did have one play out pretty good and we did take that. That was UNG. UNG calls, we took that, made about 30% on those. It is kind of selling back off, but I do have a remainder position hoping to get a little bit higher. I'm hoping to get UNG to 16 eventually on that remainder. It's not a big remainder position. I took most off at 30%, but we'll see how that goes. So at least that played out. As long as I get one setup that plays out from our list, I'm usually feeling pretty good about it. I would like it if all of them played out, obviously, but that's not always going to happen. We also had NVIDIA on watch. We were looking for put scalps on that one. I didn't like a put swing just due to the fact that I was unsure how long the pullback would last, given how low the VIX went last week. And I was right in that notion, but I did take one stab at a put scalp on NVIDIA. I think it was maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, and I stopped out pretty quick, negative 25%. And I didn't short again until Thursday, I believe. And we took some spy puts, and we'll go over uh, last week's trades right now. So for trades last week, you can see we did take a stab at the NVIDIA idea. We took 114 puts, lost about 26% on that. It was actually a pretty quick stop out, maybe like 10 minutes. I tried it at the open on a big gap up. There was a one day 21 EMA and 50 EMA test. I thought that would be a good spot and it just didn't work out. NVIDIA has been going vertical ever since. So good thing we stopped out on that. NASDAQ QQQ also took a stab at 459 calls, likely just a scalp. Tight stop on that one, lost 28%. And then here's our UNG position. We took the 15 calls. I think we held it maybe for a day or two, made 30% on that, closed that one. And in terms of looking for a pullback, I was pretty patient. Once NVIDIA didn't work, I waited a couple days to try again and we took spot 550 puts i'm still in that for september i am looking for a pullback in the spy hopefully i'll probably have maybe a 50 percent stop loss on this and probably be about a 400 loss or so just in one contract we'll see how that goes we are down 25 percent on that and then on friday we did take a couple scalps i took a qqq 473 stopped out at 36 percent on that one and then i got back in again and we made 27 percent on that one so a very mixed week for me on options only two wins couple stop outs and then we also had an expiration play this didn't really affect me because it was already down so much so this did not affect my pnl last week this is probably from two months ago i entered baidu in china just sucks and i haven't traded chinese names really since so a very mixed week for me on options i did very good on futures though we also took a small 35 dollars loss in the 300 dollars challenge account but i believe we're still at 625 dollars right now from 300 so kept risk tight if you want to follow this we are in a qqq 480 to 475 put as a put debit spread for 920 we're down about three dollars right now so 300 dollars challenge is still going we have done a really good job maintaining the equity curve all year on the 300 dollars challenge given how low the capital is i would say we've done a pretty good job we're still over a hundred percent return we haven't had any really big like drawdowns or anything like that i basically managed this 300 dollars challenge account how i would with any amount of money try to keep the losses small not taking big positions lots of cash on the sidelines and a majority of the time i'm at least like 75 percent something around that all cash i'm not really taking too much risk so i'm not getting huge rewards but i'm not getting huge losses either and before we get into our setups, we'll go over the economic calendar real quick. We do have a pretty boring week in terms of data, but we do have a couple things going on this week. We do have a couple of Fed speakers. You can see Monday, we have Waller. We also have Bostic and Michael Barr on Tuesday. Not sure if that will really move the market much. Pretty much the market's always sensitive to the Fed if it wants to be. And then on Wednesday, we do have a bigger day here. Wednesday is going to be the FOMC minutes. It's going to be from the July meeting. 
this is basically just black and white of what went on during the last meeting. So a lot of the stuff we will already know, but sometimes the market will pick up on things it didn't pick up on in the meeting or the press conference. So the FOMC minutes can give a knee-jerk reaction at 2 p.m. when it comes out. It really just depends if people saw anything new in black and white or not. And then on Thursday, given how sensitive we were to the initial jobless claims the other week, I would say definitely pay attention to this at 8.30 and be prepared for a knee-jerk reaction. But given how much we've recovered and how much of the fear has gone away, I feel like the impact for initial jobless claims might be a little bit less than it was and we'll kind of go back to being a boring data set. But we'll see how that goes. And then we do have services PMI and also manufacturing PMI as well. That's going to be 15 minutes after the opening bell. And Friday is going to be the big one of the week. It's going to be Fed Chair Jerome Powell. He's going to be at that Jackson Hole retreat. So it's basically just a retreat for Fed members. And there is a Jerome Powell speech, and that happens every single year. Really, he just comments on monetary policy, how the economy is doing, and other stuff like that. I would say it could have a high impact on the market for sure. So everybody's going to be watching that at 10. That's going to kind of be the big one of the week. Otherwise, we just have PMIs and the minutes. That's really it. But I would say Jackson Hole is going to be the big one of the week. All right. And for seasonality this week, we do have kind of a bearish tilt on the 10 year data set here. You can see we kind of have a little downside here, but winning trades is actually only 30%. But the fact that the dips are so big during this period kind of gave it a pretty high summarized profit at 6% if you went short this period the last 10 years. So even though the winning trades aren't big, the pullbacks are big enough to get you into profit over the last 10 years. And that's why you see this little dip being projected in the seasonality. And for the 20 year data set, the pullback is really not that big. It's actually a little bit choppy. We have winning trades at 35% with a summarized profit at negative 3%. So nothing special here. I don't really see a big up thrust or a big down thrust, which kind of makes sense. Really the SPY and the QQQ are kind of at resistance right now and might need a little consolidation given how fast we've recovered. It's literally a V recovery. So it might need a little consolidation phase and that kind of does match with this. We'll have to see how that goes. VIX is very low, so I'm not expecting big downside, but I do kind of want to see a pullback in the market. Even if it's just a little five to 10 point pullback, that would be sufficient enough to buy the dip, trade up into the end of August, and then be prepared for the pullback in September. So seasonality pretty mixed. I would say the 10 year has a more obvious downtrend here. You can see it's a pretty big flush over the last 10 years. We'll to see how that goes kind of a neutral to bearish tilt for seasonality this week all right and on to setups for the week i do want to have at least one bull setup and this is going to be a little bit of a longer term setup as usual and the reason why i want to look at it as a more longer term setup is because we do kind of have a issue here at the 50 ema you can see every time we get up to the 50 over here and also back here we do reject back down so unity software might need some time to get back over that 50 form a bottom structure and get back up to the 200 EMA all the way back here eventually. Fill up all this sell imbalance. Also needs to get over 1836 as well. So it's still in a downtrend, no matter how you look at it. If you look at the one week, we're still under the one week 921 EMA cloud. So it's still in a downtrend. And that's why you wanna kinda go with a longer term mindset on this. We do have a positive MACD on one day, also a positive MACD on one week. So that's good. So maybe a shift here. We have looked at this in the past and it's been in a couple other lists from different weeks and we had some success with it. Obviously the pops didn't last very long, but if you were kind of short term, um, you could have caught at least a you know five to ten percent on this one. And I think we looked at it back here as well. I think there was a quick five percent jump right here when we we're looking at it down here. But now we do have a nice little breakout here, and that's what I'm kind of looking at. Test one, test two, test three, short term test four rejection now breaking out of that. So Unity Software, I'm looking at calls, probably October expiration minimum. If you want to avoid the options, you could just go shares as well. This could be a good long term hold at a discount. Obviously, it's a little bit bit interest rate sensitive so we might need to see rate cuts see the economy and consumer spending go back up and you probably will see a boost in more high growth stocks so that's for you looking at calls be patient nice breakout play does need to get over the 50 ema does need to get over 1836 all right and on to some more bearish setups this is the dow jones industrial average etf we are pulling up into 
a big rally base drop supply. This is the big supply that led to the recent pullback. So I want to see some type of resistance up here somewhere in this zone. We might need a better one day candle confirmation with two bars like this. We're not really getting like a bearish signal just yet. All we have is the fact that we're now at supply. So we want to see some type of reaction up here, whether it pops up and sells off aggressively and closes with a big bearish engulfing bar. If it's just a little short term and obvious rejection bar, that's fine with me too. Could even get up to this 412 wick high right here and reject at that area. As long as it's still in the supply or at least below 413, this whole area does have potential to reject. So I'm not going to be like entering right away unless for some reason Monday gives a pretty obvious signal like taking out Friday's low or something. But if it gets up here and a little bit closer to here, I'll definitely be willing to enter as well, even without a bearish bar signal. As long as it gets a little bit closer to resistance, that's good risk to reward to take a stab, even without a rejection signal. So that's for DIA looking at puts, probably a September expiration minimum. I feel like the Octobers might be a little bit more expensive if you want to go at the money. So I'll probably go with September, gives you about 30 days, but it really just depends what we do up at the supply. I want to see some type of signal, some type of aggressive pop, maybe up into here. And I would definitely take a stab at puts on that. And we do have a little gap below. So that's probably the max downside I could project for right now. Just filling this little gap. We also have kind of a little support zone right here as well at 398. Maybe we could get down there as well. It would have to get down there, curl up there. So that's a, another scenario. Really nice supply here. Obviously, we're kind of due for some type of little consolidation, maybe a little pullback before trying to head higher if that's really what the market wants to do. But we have recovered without any type of pullback. So a little bit skeptical going into this week, looking at longs. That's why I'm kind of just looking at you. It's a little bit more discounted. You have the spy recovered all that from last week. So we'll go over that later. But market's definitely at a weird spot right now, considering we were just all the way down here and we're already all the way back up here. It might need a breather before going higher. So that's for DIA looking at put September expiration minimum could go further out if you are a little bit more scared to short this market which you have every right to be all right and last but not least we'll go over WMT just looking at puts on this one as well this one's going to be October expiration it's a little bit cheaper of a stock so the October expiration premium shouldn't be too expensive this setup is very simple it's overbought on the one week and we have a very big gap from earnings I'd like to see 50% of this gap fill at least we're also pretty extended over the one day 921 EMA a cloud as you know price likes to catch back up to the cloud every single time if it gets overextended it comes back to the cloud makes it higher low higher high higher low etc so eventually the cloud is going to catch up and honestly it can consolidate too it doesn't have to go lower to catch up with the cloud it will consolidate for a little bit as well and it will catch back up with the cloud that way as long as it's trading up here the moving average will bring its way back up eventually. So it doesn't always have to like pull back aggressively to get back to the cloud. Using how extended we are over the nine and 21 is a good way to measure kind of short term overbought conditions, etc. You do have the MACD going against you. You have a fresh signal here crossing to the upside. It might need to take out Friday's low before kind of doing anything to the downside. And I might be a little bit early and that's why I'm looking at October expiration for puts. We also have a pretty big bullish bar here on the one week. So it's not like this is the best signal to go short. You're kind of trying to time a top. We do have a little bit of kind of a channel line right here, upper channel line. So maybe we can reject off of that as well. We'll have to see how that goes. Obviously, it's not like a big rejection. This is just a little micro pullback to lead up to that earnings pop. You also have the MACD just way up high. Obviously, it had a short term signal to the downside. As you can see, this red little bubble here that was a cross down. Now it's at a green bubble crossing back up. But this MACD is very high and it's kind of hard for me to expect it to go too much higher. It might need a rebalance. So we'll see how that goes. WMT looking at puts October expiration. Give it lots of time and we're kind of shooting for at least 50% of this gap. All right. And on to the indexes. We'll go over the SPY first. Last week I was looking for some type of short term rejection off this cloud, which we did not get at all. So I was wrong on that. So here was Friday's close. We had a short term rejection, I guess. We pulled into 531 on Monday day but it wasn't like a big rejection bar like this off the cloud it was nothing special and then another area could have rejected off was the 50 ema and the 21 ema here at i think it was like 540 to 539s we closed over that on tuesday and that tuesday close really set us up for the rest of the week we got back over the 50 ema we got back
back over the 21 EMA. We got back over the 9 EMA. We were over everything. Another one that baffled me was not even a slight rejection at the 61.8% retracement. That 61.8% is always a good area to reject aggressively, come back down, at least test the 50 and then go lower. We did have a very short term rejection at the 61.8 here. You can see a pullback about 0.34%. So almost a two point pullback. It's pretty big. Nothing crazy, but it was a nice little pullback at the 61.8. You would have thought that maybe that could turn into something, but that did not. We held the 15 minute EMAs. As you can see, the 921 cloud held really good despite that 61.8 rejection really consolidated off the cloud. Probably got good data here on Thursday, jobless claims, and we continued higher. So that did not go how I expected last week at all, but I didn't short until here on Thursday. I took a stab up here and I'm down 25% on September puts, but I do really like how this 555 area, this is a big rejection area. I would like to see some downside from that, maybe fill the gap and then pull back into the 61.8, kind of make a little inverse head and shoulders. You can see we have a shoulder ahead. Maybe we could pull back, make another shoulder and then try to go higher or maybe like a little cup and handle. But obviously if it does get over 555, we start closing over 555, you have free space to 565 at all time high. So this little free space over 555 is also a potential scenario to the upside. I really would like to see this rejection at 555. That's kind of what I'm aiming for right now. So I could be wrong. You know, I was looking for a pullback back here at the cloud as well. Did not get that last week. And this market's been a little bit harder to predict lately. I mean, we had a very aggressive downside. We had elevated VIX. We had VIX over 20 for the first time in a while. My expectation was it wasn't just going to be easy to V recovery like this. And sure enough, we did. So that's really all I got for SPY this week. Just kind of looking for 555 to maybe turn into resistance. And max downside I could project would probably be 544. I don't think that would just happen within a week, given how low the VIX is now. VIX is at 1481. And it's even risky to go long up here as well. I mean, if you didn't catch it, you know, back down here, or at least back when it broke over the 50 EMA again, right here at about 540s, you're kind of a little bit late. So never a good idea to buy on a vertical move, wait for a dip. Maybe we can get into the 61.8 of 544 and you could take a stab there. My favorite areas are always buying at the one day 920 EMA combo back when we were trending over back here this is always my preferred area to add on dips anytime it got to the cloud was a good area for me same thing back here anytime it got to the cloud it was a good area to buy the dip so we would want to see that again you don't want to just buy into the vertical moves you want to wait for it to get back down make a higher low and add there all right and on to nasdaq or qqq so last week i was looking for basically the same thing as spy i was kind of looking for this cloud to kind of turn into a rejection I was hoping to see at least some type of short-term rejection. We didn't even get that because Monday we closed flat basically. And then Tuesday, I'm guessing we had good data. And then even the 50 EMA didn't reject either. Very short term, it actually did on Wednesday, as you can see by this bar, but overall it did hold the 921 cloud. And that turned into a gap up over the 50 on Thursday when we had that initial jobless claims. So now we're at 475.55, a very big resistance point. As you can see right here, it's kind of similar to SPY's setup. We're at that Thursday, August 1st high, and we could see some short term resistance there. If we add some Fibonacci here, we do have NASDAQ just over the 61.8. Obviously, that could still kind of reject this area 475 turns into a rejection point this 61.8 setup could turn into a rejection as well i did want to kind of show you something real quick back from 2023 so this is kind of similar to where we're at now in 2024. So here was the last time QQQ had a very aggressive pullback from highs, kind of like what we did the past couple weeks. But even though I had a V recovery here back in 2023, we really didn't have a pullback until it got to the 78.6, as you can see right here. And then we kind of stalled out at the 61.8 and that turned into more downside. So maybe we need to get up to the 78.6 on NASDAQ before doing a move like this back down. So here's us now. Maybe we need to get up to this to kind of replicate that 2023 pullback back here hit the 78.6 before doing anything here's us now we're at the 61.8 maybe we need to get up here before it heads lower but yeah not too much setting up here we are at a pretty big res point here at 475.55 we also have a little gap below here from thursday so 475 is really the only major level i'm watching on nasdaq this week or on qqq there's not really any nearby supports other than you know thursday's low at the 
gap start. You could even mark this little low here from Friday as well. That was a pretty good bounce point. So you could watch that 471.65. But otherwise, just that 475.55, that big res point, it's really all that I'm watching right now. Either needs to turn into a rejection from this point or it needs to break over that. There's a little bit of gap left to fill this period right here. So this is a little gap left. Obviously, we already filled 50% of it. So I don't have it marked right now just due to the fact that we've already filled most of it. But there's a little bit left to fill to the upside as well. But yeah, that's really it, guys. Spy and QQQ, both at major res points. You got Spy at the 455 at this peak right here. Need to watch that. And then you have QQQ 475, which is kind of similar to Spy setup. So both big res points. Need to see what they do from here. I definitely wouldn't want to go long into it. I would want to wait for a breakout over it. All right, not to VIX. So last week we closed under the 2136. I mentioned that looked pretty good for bulls. You had 2308 and then you had 2136. That was kind of the level to get back over for the bears and they failed to do that. So here was Friday's close. It closed, I think like right at 20, maybe upper 19s or something like that. And the max downside I had for VIX to continue lower was the 1571, which we marked live in that video. And even we broke under that. So now really the only downside you have left for the VIX is 1182 if it wants to continue lower. I don't think you guys understand the impact this had on premiums and how fast this recovered back down to lows. This is literally the fastest move down in the VIX in history. Not even 2008, not even COVID, none of that. VIX did not sell off as fast to the downside as it did in this period right here. Maybe something broke this day. I have no clue. Maybe that Japanese yen carry trade really did screw some things up. Just the fact that one bad day took us to 65 really shows how sensitive the markets are to really like any hint of crisis. So I don't even want to know what the market's going to do when we actually do have a crisis. It's just kind of scary to think about. It's just crazy because like really nothing even happened this day we had indexes down like five percent at one point overnight we had japan down like 12 percent. but overall it was kind of a blip in the system given how high we are if we looked at qqq right now i mean look at this it's really like that pullback really wasn't even that severe and that little pullback took the vix to 65 so that's just crazy like this is really just a micro pullback this wasn't a macro pullback at all and look at that monthly candle dude that is disgusting it's almost like you can't even like take a second to think when the market dips you kind of just have to buy it because everybody's so impatient to just get back in and instantly you see those algos bid and we do v recoveries and then we have vix crushing you don't have vix staying elevated you don't have stocks staying down to accumulate it's all just like very extreme like i don't remember the last time i've seen an accumulation phase in the indexes like a nice consolidation phase to where you can like add build a position you have consolidation and then you have these big breakouts we haven't had that since maybe back here in 2023. This is somewhat of a accumulation phase. This is kind of a short term accumulation phase. Maybe you could even argue distribution because it sold off right here, but overall it did get bought back up. This did not last at all. No type of accumulation at the lows, no type of consolidation, nothing. So markets are in extreme still, obviously. You got very hungry bulls ready to buy the dip and you got people bearish to VIX ready to crush the VIX. Buy the dip, short the VIX, Fuck Bitcoin. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the VIX. Fuck Bitcoin. So yeah, it's crazy, guys. I mean, uh, sometimes you can't even blink in the market because it will recover fast and the VIX will go back down very aggressively. Usually, I mean, VIX doesn't stay up very long, but this is just insane. I mean, the 65 to 14 and 10 days or whatever it is, it's just never seen it. So really the only level you should be watching is obviously 1571. If VIX starts working its way back over that and closing back over 1571, that could turn into a move back up to the 20s. Otherwise, if it keeps staying under 1571, you pretty much have a shot down to 1182, which is the multi-bottom lows. Got a bottom here, a bottom here, and a bottom here. So that 1182 is a big, big VIX level. And really every time VIX got back down to it, it did not give it up. Every time it hit that level, there was hedges getting put on. People were probably buying SPX puts and just causing the VIX to ramp back up as soon as it hits 1182. So that's really it guys, no new levels on VIX. You have 1571, 1182. We could look at the moving averages real quick. This candle really screws everything up. You can't even look at stuff. So let's do that so we can see the moving averages a little bit better. We have the 200 EMA right here. It's at 1530s. You got the 50 EMA at 1720s. We have the 921 cloud meeting at maybe about 18s. So really the VIX would have to pop back over the 200 EMA. 
start closing back over that 200 EMA, that could take you higher. Any continued closes below that 200 is just going to take you to 1182, as I showed you. It's good to track the 200 EMA for the VIX because it can act as support. As you can see right here, it sold back off, but popped off the 200 EMA dots right here. Nice little aggressive pop. You also have a sell off from the 200 EMA right here on the VIX. Another kind of aggressive flush from the 200 EMA right here. Even all the moving averages right here, the 9, 21, the 50. But overall, once it got back under the 200 EMA or the dots, it kind of did pick up more to the downside. Likewise here, you have support off the 200 EMA right here and also the 921 cloud. So it's good to track these moving averages. Look, another 200 EMA rejection, rejection, 200 EMA. Got another 200 EMA rejection, another 200 EMA rejection. So I just wanted to show you that. Uh, the 200 EMA is good to track for the VIX. Right now we're briefly below it. We would need to get back over it for upside, stay below it for that move to 1182. It's looking more favorable to the bulls, obviously, but it really just depends what we do at SPY 555 and also QQQ 475 if we see a rejection or not. Could be a slow week until Friday. We do have PMIs on Thursday. Definitely pay attention to those on Thursday. Uh, the FOMC minutes Wednesday could move us as well. But most importantly, this week's going to be Jackson Hole on Friday. Otherwise, markets could be a little bit boring. Like I said, we've made a V recovery. We might need a little consolidation, some type of boring. Who knows? You know, the market's crazy lately. Maybe it doesn't need boring at all. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff. I love you, and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with a trading mentor today, completely free of charge.